Dent, why Wes Montgomery? Uh, you know, he was my favorite, simply put, of all really? the greats. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody my age uh, gravitated towards at least one of the masters. And some guys, you know, I know love Kenny Burrell. Some guys are Grant Green, uh, Joe Pass, Jim Hall. You know, for me, it was always West was the guy who, of that generation, was, the, I thought, the, you know, the greatest. So he's the, you know, one I sort of, I think I, I love the most. And so that's a good guy to do a... Can, can you put your finger on what it was that, that did, did it for you? You know, I it, I can't. I mean, it's just so beautiful. So, I mean, really, I think he was sort of the most logical. I mean, that uh -huh. would be to put it into terms that I use in teaching. What he played was so logical and so, uh, you know, so... Intera you know, it's so creative, so interesting, so swinging, although that wasn't the big appeal to me. It was just sort of the logic of it, the beauty uh -huh. of it, the, 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 the musicality of it. How old were you when you discovered West Montgomery? Probably 15. Really? My friend Chris Brandt, I think, gave me a record of his, uh -huh. and it's called Easy Groove. Uh -huh. And uh, it's a really rare record, because uh -huh. at that time records would come out with certain tracks, and then there'd be another record that had the same tracks, but edited, ver you know, yeah. and it was a really, really good record. Uh -huh. So that changed everything. Uh, what, what was the first tune off of that that you tried to play? I think it's a tune called, uh, oh, that I tried to play. Yeah. I didn't really, tr you know, a lot, to me, you know, it's funny, back then, you know, you really had to figure out music. It's not mm -hmm. like now, where it can be explained to you immediately, uh -huh. or it's presented to you all the time. I mean, back then, so, like, I was listening to those tunes, and I really didn't have any idea how they worked until I was, you know, 20 or 21, and then wow. I was, like, I think the first tune we played was Monk's Shop, which yeah. is the tune that we're going to do at the concert. Ah. So how do you figure? How do you figure out what to play at this at this show? Well, it's interesting. You know, I'm. I want to present some different sides of Wes. Uh -huh. So I'm going to do some two songs from that record that people have probably never ever heard. What's wow. Monk Shop and uh -huh. a song called Leela uh -huh. that I've played for years, and I love those two songs. They're really representative of Wes. And then I want to do some of his big pop hits, and I want to do some of the tunes he's most famous for. And uh, I want to do some other stuff that he did in sort of a commercial vein. Uh -huh. If I had, you know, I, you know, it would be nice to have a Klaus Ogerman and the orchestra strings and, you know, <laughs> big band with horns and, you know, vibes. And, uh -huh. you know, we're going to try and get some of the same effect with, you know, synthesizers for strings and all that. So tell me about the band. Well, it's going to be, I thought, well, Hootie, I've done this. I did it once before, a tribute to Wes. And it was so much fun. And... On that gig, I had a, a really wonderful group, Andrea Anemic on bass, who's a great bass player, and uh, uh, really, you know, sort of the kind of bass player that just wants to play bass, you know, yeah. and just really a supportive bass player. Uh -huh. And so she's from the other gig. I thought, well, uh, if Wes was in town, who would he use on drums? <laughs> and it would probably be Mel Brown, because Mel is, and I'm blessed to play with Mel, you know, Wednesdays and Thursdays, and I've learned so much about playing really in that style, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of this jazz, I don't think you can play unless you have some connection to somebody who really played it. Mm -hmm. I've been playing these gigs with Javon Jackson, the saxophonist, and Les McCann. Mm -hmm. You know, and Javon's always talking about playing with Art Blakey and the Messengers, and playing with Elvin Jones, and playing in Freddie mm -hmm. Hubbard's band. Mm -hmm. You realize that, you know, he got it from the source. Uh, playing with Mel has really helped my straight ahead conception. So, mm -hmm. Mel sounds like the cats, you know, Jimmy Cobb, he sounds yeah. like the cats, the, you know, Philly Joe, he sounds like Wes's favorite cats. And then George Mitchell is a guy who uh, I've been through, you know, thick and thin with. Uh, and George is just always the ultimate accompanist, and, and and he really comes out of Winton Kelly in his jazz playing, so he's kind of the perfect guy for that. So it's a cool group. Yeah, yeah. So what what is the challenge when, well, you, when, you, when you do one of these? You know, the challenge... It's a responsibility, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, I would feel it's more of a challenge, but the last time I did it, it was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, the chat, you know, like I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try not to use my pick much, uh -huh. and I'm using my. Finally, got an L5 about a year ago. Uh -huh. That's what Wes used. So I finally got a lot more of Wes's sound dialed in. Uh, you know, playing without a pick. You know, we'll play Arigen, we'll play some up tempo stuff, which without uh -huh. a pick is really tricky. Um, uh, I think the challenge is just to relax and have fun. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. good because it's gonna be fun. Yeah. Isn't that always the challenge? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, sometimes the. 
I mean, we're going to play a lot of tunes that I've played for years. Yeah. And so those will be sort of like really just trying to get inside the music. And there'll be a few new tunes where we'll be yeah. you know, having to think more about the music. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you working on? We got projects you want? Well, I will tell you what I'm working on. The last three months I've been doing, uh, I'm playing this Saturday with Third Angle, a concert of the music of S Steve Reich at Montgomery Park. And so I'm playing Electric Counterpoint, which he wrote for Pat Metheny. Mm -hmm. So it's 15 minutes of guitar with a backing track of 14 guitars. It's 15 minutes of written out reading. So I've been working on that for the last three months. I guess you have. Yeah, I've been working hard on that. So wow. if any, you know, if you get this up on the air, the Raikonalia concert is going to be really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Wow. So there, that's a big third angle presentation. And then awesome. I've actually been uh, you know, out some with Siobhan Jackson and, and Les McCann, which has yeah. been fun. We were in Oakland and we were in Santa Cruz. And I've been writing some new tunes that I'm excited about. And, you know, I mean, I've been writing songs, you know, for, for uh, you know, to be honest with you, 40 years. And so to still be excited about what you're writing, yeah. uh, or to get excited again about what I'm really uh -huh. excited about these new songs I've written. So uh -huh. I hope people will come down on a Monday night to Jimmy Max and hear us play them. Uh -huh. So it, 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 it's, a, it's a go by train? Yeah, go by train in my trios, yeah. I mean, I sort of hybrid yeah. versions yeah. of playing the songs. Just kind of discovering what the songs want to be right now. What's the style? Uh, you know, I want to get, uh, one of them is, one of them is, you know, I mean, I've always tried to mesh, you know, alternative rock yeah. and jazz. So one of them is like a really great manifestation of alternative rock turning into jazz, which turns into like noise <laughs> and uh, noise music, like just a big wall of beauty. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then, you know, I would like things to get more techno. That's what I want. I want to, I want to, I want a drummer who's going to play like break beats all the time. <laughs> So that's what I'm thinking about. I was going to send an email to all my drummer friends and say, hey, whoever plays the best break beats gets the gigs now. <laughs> Dan Ballmer doing crunk? Well, I guess. <laughs> Man. Is that what they call it? I love the best concept. Yeah, well, I mean, we've done a little bit of that on Go By Train. I mean, listen to earlier yeah. Go By Train records. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. had a lot of that stuff and drum machine. Uh -huh. So I want to pursue right. that more. I feel all like right. that's kind of a new thing that's okay. happening. Well, best of luck uh, doing all those projects. Well, uh, you know, I, I, thank you so much. I always appreciate your keeping on top of it for us. Thank you.